Holy smokes. Now here's the deal. I'm no expert, but check out these macro photos. What makes these photos special is not that they're perfect, not that they're framed incredibly well, but that I took these photos within hours of getting started with macro photography. Now, the thing is, and really the inspiration for this video, is I feel like I played myself when I got started. And what I mean by that is there is a lot of great information out there, but how you apply it is either gonna make things a lot harder for you early or just a little bit easier, allowing you to take some great photos. Now my basic guidelines when I'm getting started is to keep things as simple as possible. I'm striving for easy, knowing that macro photography is certainly not easy, but there are some things we can do to make it more likely that I and maybe you take great photos. Oh, real quick, if you're into photography, consider subscribing. Tip number one is to begin with stationary objects, especially if you're struggling with anything that's moving, primarily insects. And flowers are a great way to start because they're far more predictable than insects. And for whatever reason, there's been a lot of bees and wasps, a lot of flying insects, and that's what I've been focusing on. And that's gonna be one of the hardest subjects to capture when it comes to macro photography. So one of the things is I backed up and I began with flowers and it was really an enjoyable experience. And tip number two, buy a flash, especially if you're just getting started and you're wondering like what lens to buy, the thing I would really encourage you to do is factor in that, hey, I wanna get into macro photography, I want a lens, and I'm also gonna buy a flash because that will make the process much easier, technically speaking, and pick up a diffuser as well. Tip number three is my camera settings. Again, for good photos. I always start with my ISO and my goal is to keep my ISO as low as possible depending on the situation. If I'm around one to one magnification, I can almost always shoot below 200, ISO of below 200. The lower the ISO, the cleaner and the sharper Sharper your images will be. Next is shutter speed. A shutter speed of 200 is fantastic and it's safe. It's also low enough to really incorporate a lot more light into your photo rather than having to shoot at say ISO 700, 800, 1000 if you don't have a flash. And then lastly is aperture and check it out. This is where I kind of tweak things and I don't necessarily listen to the, these are the sharpest settings in your camera advice because I'm just trying to get one great photo that I'm happy with. And for me, if I'm doing insects and they're moving, then having an f-stop of at f16 is a good happy medium as far as getting more of my subject in focus. This is especially true if you're shooting bigger subjects. When we talk about macro, for example, a bee, even a bumblebee, or I should say even a better example, a bumblebee, because they're bigger, meaning less of the subject is gonna be in focus. But if I push the aperture up to F16, I'm gonna get just a little bit more focus plane, which makes it easier for me to get the face and the eyes in focus. Tip number four, if you have a lens that allows you to increase the magnification past one to one, for example, the Lawa allows you to go all the way up to two times magnification, be aware that shooting photos at two times magnification is a lot more challenging. You have to incorporate more light, that can mean more ISO or a higher flash. It's just the focus plane gets so very thin. So for me personally, what I did was just, I started at around one to one and sometimes even slightly below one to one for things like bees, bumblebees, because of the size of the subject. And that brings me actually to step number five, which is the size of the subject you're shooting. As mentioned, I've, I'm shooting a lot of bees and bumblebees and wasps, 
And the Sony, the classic 90 millimeter Sony macro lens is fantastic because one to one is more than enough for beautiful macro photos of these subjects because of the size. Step number six is to play around with the focus settings that your lens and camera offer. So if you have the Sony 90 millimeter and you're really not at macro, you're shooting close up, this lens can get the focus right a good amount of the time. As you get closer to one-to-one -to -one magnification, you'll probably find, like I did, but test it out yourself, that this lens can't keep up. And that's where you really need to use manual focus. And that brings me to tip number seven. Focus peaking for me has been super helpful in really learning exactly where that setting is in my camera, setting a button to change the focus peaking colors, or just jumping in the menus and finding it has been super helpful. Example, if you're shooting in wasps, you certainly don't want the focus peaking color set to yellow. For me, white has been a, a really great choice often. However, again, it really depends on the subject. Just know that you can change the color and often that will help you when the focus is, is really challenging depending on your subject and the background. Tip number eight is do not chase the insects. For me, this was really helpful when I slowed down and just said, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna set up the shot and we're gonna wait for a, a bird, like this works for bird photography, right? We're gonna wait for the bird to return to this perch. Dragonflies, they do the same thing, creatures of habit. They land on the same perches again and again and again, so do bees, and if you just get comfortable and you're patient, your subject will come to you and then you've got everything all set up and it's perfect because you can do a test shot. You can look at the lighting, the background. You can change your f-stops. You can think about ambient light. Everything is set up and then you wait. And furthermore, when you do this, you're gonna be more likely to get the insects coming to you because you're still. Tip number nine is to be aware of the natural light that you're gonna be working with as you set up that shot. So you're, you're still, you're getting set up with one shot. And if you're using a flash, well, the flash will illuminate the subject. If you're shooting at F16, and the higher the F-stop is, you're gonna have less light in the background because the camera and the dynamic range simply cannot keep up. The subject will be so brightly lit that the light amount in the background is so off that everything becomes black. So the subject is well lit and framed, but the background is black or very dark gray. Now these can be beautiful shots, but sometimes you might wanna play with getting a background that has more color. If that's the case, then the way we compensate our lack of our camera's ability when it comes to dynamic range is to lower the f-stop so there's less spread between the subject and the background. So at f8, you're gonna get a lot more color in the background, creating a very pleasing and beautiful shot, kinda like what you're looking at now. Next, click on one of these videos on the screen Screen right now. I'll see you there. Thank you for watching. Much appreciated. You dig?